James Doohan, what a what a career, what a hero he was to us all. Uh, a hero for Canada in the Second World War, mostly for the RCAF. Had a distinguished career in the CBC in so many productions, we can't even count that high. Went on to play numerous key roles before he went into uh, playing Scotty. Star Trek motivated many people to take up engineering as a career, and he's been a role model to literally six generations because of everything he was involved with, positive and constructive. Now, James Doohan, born James Montgomery Doohan, March 3rd, uh, 1920 in, in Vancouver, was a Canadian actor and author, best known again for playing Scotty on Star Trek. Doohan's characterization of the chief engineer of the Star Trek Enterprise was one of the most recognizable elements in Star Trek, inspired many fans to pursue careers in engineering and other technical fields. He also made contributions behind the scenes, such as the initial development of the Klingon and Vulcan languages. Prior to his acting career, he served in the 14th Field Artillery Regiment of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division. He also served as a pilot. He saw combat in Europe during World War II, including the D-Day invasion of Normandy, in which he was wounded, apparently by friendly fire. Now, after the war, he had extensive experience performing in radio and television, which led to his role as Scotty, and, of course, a graduate of the Lauren Green School of uh, Arts. Following the cancellation of original Star Trek, Doohan was typecast and had limited success in finding other roles. He returned to play the character in the animated film contributions of the series and made numerous appearances at Star Trek conventions. But like he said, once to be known for Scotty uh, for the rest of your life is not a bad thing. Born in Vancouver, the youngest of four children are William Patrick Doohan and Sarah Francis Nee Montgomery, who had both immigrated from Bangor, Northern Ireland. His father, born in Belfast, was a pharmacist, veterinarian, and dentist, and member of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland. William Doohan owned a chemist shop in Main Street in Bangor, beside Trinity Presbyterian Church, and report, reportedly invented an early form of high-octane gasoline in 1923. Doohan's 1996 autobiography recounted his father's serious alcoholism. When the family moved from Vancouver to Sarnia, Doohan attended high school at Sarnia Collegiate, a very beautiful school, by the way, Institute and Technical School, where he excelled in math and science. He enrolled in 102nd Royal Canadian Army Cadet Corps in 1938. Now, in 39, he enlisted with the Royal Canadian Artillery, the 14 Midland Field Battery of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Division. From there, he moved to the 13th Field Regiment. By 1940, he was a lieutenant and sent to train in Britain prior to Operation Overlord. He fought, first saw combat landing in a second wave in a Risi party at Juno Beach on D-Day. The 13th Field Regiment was interspersed with the Regina Rifle Regiment, landing at Nan Sector, sector of Juno Beach. After shooting two snipers, Doohan led his men to higher ground through a field of anti tank mines, where he took defensive positions for the right for the night. Crossing between command posts at, at, at 11.30 that evening, Doohan was hit by six rounds, fired from a Bren gun by a nervous Canadian sentry. Four in his leg, one in the chest, and one through his right middle finger. The bullet to his chest was stopped by a silver cigarette case given to him by his brother. His right middle finger had to be amputated, something he would conceal on screen during most of his career as an actor, sometimes with a flesh-covered glove, glove with a faux finger. When he graduated from Air Observation Pilot Course 40 with 11 other Canadian artillery officers and flew Taylorcraft Oster Mark V aircraft for the 666 AOP Squadron, RCS as a Royal Canadian Artillery Officer in support of the 1st Army Group Royal, Royal Canadian Artillery, he drew more respect from his fellow soldiers and uh, participants. All three Canadian squadrons were crewed by artillery officer pilots and accompanied by non-commissioned RCA and RCF personnel serving as observers. Although he's never actually a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force, Doohan was once labeled the craziest pilot in the Canadian Air Force and uh, at the time. And in the late spring of 45 on Salisbury Plain, north of the RF Andover, he slalomed a plane between telegraph poles to prove it could be done, earning himself a serious reprimand. Various accounts cite the plane as a hurricane or a jet trader. However, it was an Oster Mark IV. Now, get this, ladies and gentlemen. After the war, he moved to London, Ontario, for further technical education. After hearing a radio drama and believing he could do better, he recorded his voice at a local radio station and learned about a drama school in Toronto. There, he won a two-year scholarship to the neighborhood playhouse in New York City, where his classmates included Leslie Nielsen, Tony Randall, and the great Richard Boone. 
So with those a prestigious classmates, you knew you would go something. In 1946, he had several roles for CBC Radio starting January 12th of that year. For several years thereafter, he shuttled between Toronto and New York as work demanded. He made his TV debut as a detective on the show Martin Kane, Private Eye, one of the old uh, TV noirs, and appeared in 54 episodes. He estimated performing over 4,000 radio programs and 40, 450 TV programs during this period and earned a reputation of versatility, especially accents. In the mid-1950s, he appeared as Forest Ranger Timber Tom, the Norton counterpart of Buffalo Bob, in the Canadian version of Howdy Doody. Coincidentally, Fellow Star Trek cast member William Shatner appeared simultaneously as Ranger Bill in the American version. Dewan and Shatner both appeared in the 1950s Canadian science fiction series Space Command. He also appeared in several episodes of Hawkeye and The Last of the Mohicans in 57-58. For GM Presents, he played a lead role in the CBC TV uh, drama Flight in the Danger, then in The Night to Kill Joe Howe, which drew a lot of interest. Arthur Haley rewrote the former into the novel Runway 08, then adapted to Tear in the Sky. The story was later satirized in Airplane. Duan's credits include The Twilight Zone, uh, G.E. True, Hazel, The Outer Limits, The Fugitive, Bewitched, Fantasy Island, Magnum P.I., The Man from Uncle, uh, the, and Bonanza. In the Bonanza episode Gift of Water, he co-starred with actress Majel Barrett, who would later play Star Trek's nurse Christine Chapel. He played an assistant to the United States President in two episodes of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea as well. He had an uncredited role in The Satan Bug, appeared in the Daniel Boone episode A Perilous Passage, appeared as State Trooper in Roger Vadim's film Pretty Maids All in a Row, of course, uh, which was produced by Roddenberry, and played opposite uh, Richard Harris in the movie Man in the Wilderness. Now, he developed a talent for access as a child. Auditioning for a role of Chief Engineer of the USS Enterprise, Duan did different accents, and producer Gene Roddenberry asked which he preferred, and Dewan replied, if you want an engineer, in my experience, the best engineers are Scotsmen. He chose the name Montgomery Scott after his grandfather. In later years, Dewan reenacted the casting process at Star Trek conventions, demonstrating a variety of awesome voices and characters. Dewan was quoted as saying, Scotty's 99% Gene Dewan, James Dewan, and 1% accent. The character was originally conceived as a semi-regular, but it was elevated to a regular supporting character. Doolin also produced voice for inanimate characters, including Saragon Return Tomorrow, the M5 Unit and the Ultimate Computer, the Mission Control Voice and Assignment Earth, and the Oracle in the For the World is Hollow and I Have Touched the Sky. He returned to the role of Scotty in the early 70s for Star Trek, the animated series. Walter Koenig, navigator Pavel Chekhov, was not hired for the series due to budget limitations, so Doolin voiced a replacement character, the alien navigator Erex. He also voiced many guest male roles, including that of Robert April, the first captain of the Enterprise, and around 50 other voices, voicing as many as seven different characters in a single episode. He rejoined the entire regular cast of Star Trek for the future feature films, including Star Trek The Most in Picture, which he also devised a Vulcan and Klingon language dialogue. He continued the role of Scotty for the sequels of Wrath of Khan, The Search for Spock, The Voyage Home, The Final Frontier, and The Undiscovered Country. And, of course, uh, the uh, Generations uh, movie. In 92, he guest starred in the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Relics, a classic in any way, playing an elderly Scott reminiscent about his time in the Enterprise. He and Walter Koenig appeared briefly with Shatler again in Star Trek Generations in a scene which trans, uh, transitioned the film series of newer cast of the first of the la- later television series in the franchise. Now, as it stands right now, Post uh, Star Trek, he didn't really have that many people are hiring him to do anything but Scotty. He uh, do a lot of guest roles, but uh, there would be uh, you know the conventions he was asked to be there. Doolin hoped that Star Trek would benefit his acting career. After the series ended, however, he found himself tabcast and had a hard time gaining other roles. After his dentist reminded him he would always be Scotty, he supported his family with income for from personal uh, appearances. But he also said once on Canadian TV or something, there's, there's uh, nothing wor- nothing bad being known as Scotty. Most of the roles do and subsequently played been in release oblique references to his Star Trek connection and engineering reputation. He was Commander uh, Canaveran in his short-lived Saturday morning live-action kid show, Jason of Star Command, and had a cameo in a made-for-TV movie, Knight Rider 2000, Jimmy Doohan, the guy who played Scotty on Star Trek. On the television series Homeboys in Outer Space, he was Pippin, 
a pun on Scotty and Sask- basketball star Scotty Pippen. He played himself in the episode of the Ben Stiller Show, and he also played Damon Warwick, Father James Warwick, on the daytime soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful. After learning about Cold Fusion from technical journals in 89, he narrated the video Cold Fusion, Fire from Water, about the site of physics behind Cold Fusion. Now, when the Star Trek franchise was revived, he again reprised the role of Scotty in seven Star Trek films. Many of Doohan's film appearances centered on the role of Scotty, such as the Lair's cameo in National Lampoon's Loader Weapon 1, where he plays a policeman doing repair work. He tells his superior officer, I'm giving it all she got, Captain, and the same accent used in Star Trek. Although he could to work with Shatner in the Star Trek films, his legendary beef with, uh, with Kirk, uh, as well noted, Doohan did not get along well with him, as once quoted as saying, I like Captain Kirk, but I sure don't like Bill. He was the only former Star Trek co-star to decline to be interviewed for Shatter for Shatter's first Star Trek Memories book about the show, nor did he consent to do so for Shatter's follow-up book, Star Trek Movie Memories, though Shatter mentioned the latter that their icy relationship with the two started to thaw when both men were working on Star Trek Generations in 94. Now, at Doohan's final uh, August 2004 convention appearance, Doohan and Shatter appeared to have mended their, their personal relationship. Now, Many fans have told Dune over the years that it was he who inspired them to choose engineering as a profession. Astronaut Neil Armstrong, an engineer before he started in the Apollo program, becoming the first man on the moon, personally told Dune on stage at Dune's last public appearance in 2004, from one old engineer to another, thanks, mate. In an interview for the first Trekkies film, Dune related the story of a young fan who was contemplating suicide. Dune says that he convinced her to attend his next convention appearance, and later learned that his encouragement and kind words had not only saved his li- her life, but inspired her to go back to school and become an electronics engineer. Now, Doon has been married three times with several children, four of them, including Christopher, with his first wife, Janet. He's married to Anita Yagel, produced no children, and uh, in early 74, when he was introduced to 17-year-old fan Wendy uh, Bromberger at a theater performance, they were married that same year when he was 54 and she was 18. Now, uh, the the couple had three children, Eric, Thomas, and Sarah. Uh, of course, Sarah came around his 80th birthday. In later years, he had uh, numerous health problems. Again, that he uh, he later suffered from Alzheimer's and Parkinson. And unfortunately, he would pass away from his maladies. Now, his sons Montgomery and Christopher play, appeared in Star Trek: The Motion Picture. Christopher also appeared in J.J. Abrams' reboot Star Trek. Simon Plague, who played Scott in the film, invited Chris and his family to the premiere for Star Trek in the Gar- Darkness in 2012. Fans uh, campaigned for Christopher Doohan, gaining him a credited cameo in the transporter room. Now, Chris Doohan plays Scotty in the award-winning web series Star Trek Continues. Has to be checked out. A great, uh, a great uh, actor. Now, unfortunately, the Parkinson's and the, uh, the other uh, ailments uh, really got to him. And on June 20th, uh, 2005, at 5.30 in the morning, Dewan died at his residence in Redmond, Washington. Now, uh, due to complications of pulmonary fibrosis, which is believed from exposure to noxious substances during World War II. Now, a portion of his ashes was scheduled the following fall for a memorial flight to space with 308 others, including Project Mercury astronaut Gordon po- Cooper. Launch on a space uh, loft XL rocket was delayed when a rocket briefly entered outer space in a four-minute uh, suborbital flight before per- parachuting the Earth as planned with the ashes still inside. The ashes were subsequently launched on a Falcon 1 rocket on August 3, 2008, and it was intended to be a low Earth or- orbit. However, the rocket failed two minutes after launch. Some of Dewan's ashes are hidden under the floor cladding of the International Space Station's Columbus uh, module after being smuggled aboard in 2008 by Richard Gerriott. The rest of Dewan's ashes were scattered over Puget Sound in Washington. In May 22, 2012, a small urn containing some of Dewan's remains and ash form was flown to space above the Falcon 9 rocket as part of the CODIS demo flight. But we always think about Scotty with great affection in Canada because we always wonder if he would have been fatally injured by friendly fire, how the universe would have been changed. If Christopher Plummer would not have had that kidney uh, kidney stone and James Doohan would have died, there would have been no Star Trek because William Shatner was just as important in Star Trek as James Doohan was. Because no matter what happened 
on the planet. This is kayfabe, as we say, or for entertainment purposes. We knew that Scotty could take care of it. And the way he taught, uh, you know, uh, uh, people how to give, he said, you got to treat captains like children, give them what they want in any way possible, but don't give them it right away. Like make this seem like a, like a genius. The famous conversation between Jordy and, uh, and Scotty during the, the relics episode, by the way, if you're going to see something about Scotty where he has a drink with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, Picard on the computerized version of the old enterprise, which is a, actually a real set. It's quite, it's quite moving. And, you know, he felt kind of left out, but Scotty could always solve anything. We knew in Star Trek there would never be uh, anything bad. And, you know, Scotty was killed a few times on Star Trek, or almost killed. We know at least one time he was killed, and he's come back to life. It's it's amazing what he what he did. But <laughs> the, the trouble with Tribbles is see him drinking there, and uh, that's soda pop. Boys, almost. if you uh, have any friends from the U.K., England, Scotland, Wales, boys, don't drink with them because they're just like Scotty, because that's the big inspiration. Every every person like Richard Harris, Keith Moon, uh, you know Oliver Reed, Scotty, <laughs> it's just you and me. The famous scene with the the alien is green. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here, we're a Star Trek podcast. Let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And as Spock would say, live long and prosper. Bye.